When you study chemistry, you have to also realize you're studying structures. A lot of what we focus on has to do with molecular structures, structures of ionic substances. And they need to be able to, students need to be able to see that and feel it and interact with that. Model kits can be rather expensive, so I came upon this idea. These are just typical coffee stirs. Little single barrel ones, they come double barrel, you can use those too. And twist ties, okay? I like the pl all plastic ones. So if I want to put three of these together to make a three-way juncture to talk about trigonal planar or trigonal pyramidal, or have the students experiment with that, the technique involves just taking it, twisting it into a little loop, giving a little twist there, and it's a tight fit, but you just slide the uh, end of that twist die into the coffee stir end. Now I can make a three-way juncture then just by bending this into a little Y. And these have to be crimped a little bit just to get them to pass in there. Okay, how simple is that? I actually showed this to my daughter's fourth grade class this year as part of a uh, series of demonstrations and the teacher asked for some of these and they just had so much fun building different shapes. Well, not just this, this is kind of limited. This is a three-way juncture. You could talk about, okay, if these things are all repelling each other as much as possible, how would this arrange itself? I mean, all different possible answers, but of course the best one would have them set at nice 120 degrees. We call it trigonal planar. If I had just two of them, of course it would be linear, but if there were other forces at play here that might cause it to be bent or V-shaped. How about four things? How would four things spread themselves out? 99% of your students after doing those first two would of course answer like that, a little plus sign, because they're thinking in two dimensions. And I think that's, to some extent, based on the fact that a lot of what they see in math class, geometry is two-dimensional, they don't take it to that third dimension enough. In chemistry, we have to, because this, doesn't, this is not the answer. This is not the shape of the methane molecule. Anything that has four things attached to a central atom can get those four things spread even more. A little bit, yep, and when it comes undone, easy enough just to put it back on there by giving a tetrahedral arrangement. And you got the tetrahedral arrangement correct if you can hold it by any of the sticks and have it look the same, so I can tell I don't have it just quite right. I can fine tune it there, make it so it stands up just right, no matter what arrangement. They can then go ahead and measure those angles pretty easily. See if they are 109.5, okay? Of course, five things gives you the trigonal bipyramidal arrangement. And, this is as far as we go, six things gives you this, which is the octahedral arrangement. Of course, that's strange that six things would have the prefix octahedral, but of course that's because it's describing the shape, and we'll come back to that in a second. So, molecular shapes can be done with just coffee stirs and twist ties, and the nice thing about these is, again, the students can talk about, I don't know, actually, they're square pyramidal too. Um, they, they can talk about adjusting these angles really easily. Okay. I can also use three-way junctures like this for shapes. In fact, if I did just this and then put another one across there and across there and across there, in other words, something made out of nothing but triangles, I would have, I've got a bunch of these down here ready to be farmed out. Simple structure, the tetrahedron. Okay. What an easy way to make that frame. So, what if instead of starting with a triangle and then building triangle, 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 I started with a square? Fair question. You all know what that looks like. It would generate a cube. Mm hmm How many of these shapes are there? Could I start with a pentagon and just add pentagon after pentagon to it? And of course, that generates the lovely dodecahedron. Those are three of the five platonic solids. Another one of them goes back to triangles. 
instead of three-way junctures like this, if it has four-way junctures, it gives you this shape, the octahedron. And now we can see why that previous shape was named octahedral. Okay, mm -hmm. if we fit this inside there, you can see it would go out to those same corners. And again, back to a triangle, the uh, icosahedron. All these made it for just pennies because it's coffee stirs and twist ties. By the way, this is a fair question. This is pentagons. I stopped there. What if I had gone hexagons? Again, just three-way junctures. Hexagon to hexagon to hexagon. Well, that produces something that does not close. <laughs> chicken wire. Farmer would see this as chicken wire. A chemist would see this as graphite. Or the starting material, there is kind of a closure, for nanotubes, right? So you can model just about anything with these. And this is a wonderful thing to give students and have them take home and do this at home. I wouldn't spend a lot of class time. It is kind of time consuming, but it gives a student a bag of these at twist ties and coffee stirs and instructions and have them come in with different shapes. So there's a little nanotube, okay? And along those same lines, using just pentagons and hexagons, you can get the infamous buckyball, carbon 60. So lots of wonderful shapes here. What else do I have down here? Oh yeah. <laughs> this one doesn't match any of these other ones. This is an Archimedean solid. It doesn't have equal faces all around. It's got triangles and squares. So it's just a triangular prism. The real fun comes in combining these with this, soapy water. <laughs> Again, chemistry, intermolecular forces, hydrogen bonding, causing these soap films to be as small as possible. So what happens if I take this, the simplest of the platonic solids, and dip it in soapy water? What would the soap film look like that covers this frame? Well, if I dip just one face in, it kind of comes out easy. That's nice and flat. It would seem to make sense if I dip the whole thing and I would just get a bunch of flat surfaces. Uh, but soap films know better. They know, <laughs> as intelligent as they are, that the best way to cover that frame is with a soap film arrangement like that. And there is that perfect tetrahedral arrangement I showed you earlier, mm -hmm. them all meeting at the center at your 109.5 degree angles. That is the methane molecule, central atom and bonds going out to the four hydrogens right there. If you want to get a better view of that central atom, you can go ahead and put a little bubble in there. What is that shape? Is it a sphere? Is it a pyramid? It's a spheramid. <laughs> this is kind of interesting. If I go to pop it, watch what happens. You see that little tiny one that forms? It happens every time. It doesn't disappear completely. It forms the smaller one in the middle. And that's another thing. What if I say, I don't want to connect all these with the least amount of material. I want to omit this one. Okay, now that's the solution. Well, what if I want to omit this bar too? Now I get a nice little curvy linear shape. Those are known in math as saddle structures for what should be an obvious reason. It looks kind of like a saddle. But that is the solution to how to connect those four sticks with the least amount of surface area. Oh, I have to show you this. We'll see if I can do this. <laughs> Hmm. There we go. See my little snowman? <laughs> kind of cute. I don't know. <laughs> now, I can't, I can't get enough of these, honestly. I've played with these for years, and I still... What would, what would happen if I dipped this in soapy water? Oh, boy. Could they all meet in the middle like the tetrahedron did? Well, that's not the best way. The best way is for them to meet at a square plane in the middle. If I dip this in again, I can get, is it a sphere? Is it a cube? It's a sphube. Also looks like an old-fashioned TV set, right? Hey, look, I'm on TV. <laughs> 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 I 
And as it pops, it goes through a whole bunch of different possible rearrangements. So another nice thing you can do to see that fube that forms in the center a little better is this. I've got some dry ice over here. And I'm going to take a small piece of it and place it in this flask. The flask has a two-hole stopper, and one of the holes has a little tube coming out. So what I can do then, I don't know why, just for fun, <laughs> is get my nice little whoop, cube going there, and then dip this in there. And then as I cover this up, I can make a nice little... Now notice that's distorted. <laughs> It's got a wider base than it does top because that carbon dioxide in there is so dense. Another thing you might be noticing is that that, that, that bubble is shrinking. It was getting smaller and smaller. Unfortunately, some of the other bubbles are popping now, but that's kind of a fun thing to do. Um, it's also possible to, sometimes this works, just kind of rest that bubble in there. <laughs> oh, that was weird. Did you all see that? Seems like it's reproducible, too. Oh, <laughs> different every time. So some cool stuff going on here. Um, I saw a fellow once, Tom Noddy, incredible bubble magician, blowing bubbles. And to make his bubbles milky, uh, white like that, he was smoking a cigarette and blowing that into him. That I couldn't do, but this is my version of that. Of, <laughs> um, you saw the methane molecule when I dipped this in, right? There it is, a little CH4. What about if I dip this trigonal prism in? That's right. That's the ethane molecule. C2, H6, in what's called the eclipse position, not the staggered, but the eclipse position. Not the most stable configuration, but still. So... I don't know, maybe you can figure out other shapes that would give you propane and butane and all the other ones. I will show you one that gives you isopentane, or no, sorry, neopentane. Check this out. This is really tricky. This is the octahedron. And this one is temperamental. You've got to get it just right. And there it is. If you look at that carefully, if I can get rid of that one bubble that formed there without popping the rest up. I didn't. Let me try that again. See what I mean by being temperamental? There it is. I'm drying my thumb here so I can pop the unwanted ones. If you look carefully at that, I'm not sure if the camera can capture that, I've got a tetrahedral arrangement, and each one of those goes out to another tetrahedral arrangement. So that'd be C5, H12, that's... 2,2-dimethyl propane or simply neopentane, an isomer of it there in its configuration. So that's kind of fun. Um, can we get a bubble inside there? I bet we can. You see what kind of arrangements we get with this. Whoop. Yeah. Kind of get an octahedral bubble in there. But perhaps my favorite of them all is this one. Again, Tom Noddy made a dodecahedron like this uh, just completely out of bubbles. And inside was a bubble that was surrounded by 12 others, so the inside bubble had this shape. So I'm going to try to recreate that just using a frame. This one you have to dip in and then dip in a second time pretty quickly in succession. And when you do, you can see in the center of that, let me get rid of this one here, a beautiful, more perfect dodecahedron than the frame that produced it. And all the surfaces of that are flat. Isn't that neat? I don't know. I think it's cool. And again, you can start popping different films here and see what happens. I need dry fingers. But, well, okay. So, wonderful series of activities you can do. <laughs> using <laughs> the cheapest of possible materials, coffee stirs and twist ties. We're illustrating molecular structures. 
We're illustrating what happens with Vesper via uh, the valence shell electron pair repulsion. But then taking a step further and tying into three-dimensional geometry, and still a lot of connections between a tetrahedral frame and the tetrahedral molecule that gets produced inside of it.